Hello, welcome back to the Four Mile Circus. We're back in the Summer Rose Court. Uh, I don't know if you caught my last episode, but it cut off abruptly halfway through the recording, so I'm picking up where that left off. Uh, Ruby is on her way to the Curia with Ozpin and the crew, and we're off to look at some portals, portal shopping. So we've just arrived at the Curia, and we are discussing the smoothness of its walls. So uh, here we go. Ruby Rose, it's completely smooth. One solid piece. Lord Ospin, very astute Ruby, ever the scholar. Yang, so it's a big wall. What's so great about it? I love Yang. I've forgotten how much I love Yang. Hi Yang, good to have you back. Beacons are taller. Glinda makes a small noise of disgust. I'm going to do that. <laughs> but refrains from commenting. That makes a change. Yang tightens her grip on the reins to look around. There doesn't seem to be a gate. What are we supposed to do? Fly in? Lord Ospin. They're deciding whether to let us in. What are you talking about? It's the Queen. It's Ruby. We're here. Let us in. Yang. And if they don't? Ospin doesn't answer. Ospin's been through the wars, hasn't he? He looks a little gaunt from his time on the, on the throne. Ruby, don't be silly, Yang. They're expecting us. Here's Glinda. Then I turn to Glinda. They made this with magic, right? Glinda, and no small amount of engineering knowledge. She's a fun factory. I wonder how quick it is to make a wall out of magic. Are they stronger than our walls? Or do the wizards not rely on them too much, since everyone on the inside is capable of repelling a grim attack? Good point. She thinks like a queen, doesn't she? Ruby. We should look into making more fortifications like this within the city. I mean, if they'll let us. Lord Ospin. We'll see about asking them. It's a good idea, he's thinking. Why didn't I think of that? They were happy to enchant most of our weapons. So further collaborations between us shouldn't be too difficult to engineer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A low rumbling sound distracts us all. I think that's Yang's stomach. I notice a thin black line dividing some of the stones where none had been before. It becomes more defined as the noise increases in volume. Taking a few steps back, I realise the doors had been there the whole time. Oh, and we're in. And we are in. This is the Curia. Okay, so this is where all the wizards hang out, doing wizard things, playing Scrabble, Monopoly. Swinging on unseen hinges. The walls part and we can see inside. It's quite nice, actually. There's a courtyard not too much further in. People, movement, activity. Yang, guess that means come in. Glinda instructs the guards who came with us to remain outside. Only Yang, Ozpin, Glinda and I are allowed in. It's very quiet inside the Curia. The only noise is the sound of hooves clattering and claws scraping as we enter. Oh, that's right, we're on dragons. Salika, my dragon. The enclosure is huge. I even spot some greenhouses on what looks to be a plot of land for gardening much further in, with wizards silently at work. They're a busy, industrious lot, aren't they, wizards? It's not all staff and none shall pass. Glinda. Ah, home. God, she lives here, doesn't she? Try not to break anything, Rose. Oh, God, I can just... Oh, Glinda! <laughs> Even the floor is made of that same grey stone, though as we move further in I notice a carefully maintained amount of greenery as well. I don't notice any children. The youngest person seems to be an apprentice around my age, running across the enclosure doing errands. Look at Ruby's face, she's so earnest. A wizard comes to greet us, his lips thinly sealed into a frown. Glinda raises her hand in greeting, a bright light appearing on her palm. He mirrors it. The two wizards stand like that for a few seconds. Then she moves aside, folding her hands behind her back. Osbin takes that as his cue to step in. <coughs> We're here to speak to the Archmage. Why I'm suddenly doing an Osbin voice. It's time to make another attempt. It's time. Look at Ruby's face. She's like... Ugh. I swallow, throat tight. 
I don't like the word attempt in that sentence. I don't know if anyone else finds that unsettling. The wizard just nods, gesturing for us to wait. On the perimeter I spot buildings, all of them fused into the main wall like small buds. The centre of the enclosure is kept clear except for the portals themselves. Ruby. Wow. <gasps> oh. Hello. Oh, wait a minute. Let's just take this in. Wait a minute. Oh. Hello, hello. Wow, that looks, looks like a sort of jade one. Isn't that like a Greek one or something? I like that little pan then. Okay, I, I really much like the uh, the portal uh, what's the portal artwork. I'd seen trade portals before. Arches made of metal and stone, smooth and seamless, just like these walls. They exist outside the Curia, halfway points between here and the beacon. We had passed a few such places on our way here. Those were always busy and moving, with magic coming alive in the air as goods were transported to and fro between planes but there were nothing compared to these. Yang, you, you've never seen them before? I shake my head. Just drawings. My parents never took me here. There are five major portals in total. They each have a name and a story. They are sacred things. They need to be protected, guarded. Sorry, this is Ozpin. Only Rose Monarchs and Curia members are allowed to see them dormant. They are ancient, out of place among the obviously more modern walls. Here is Glinda. When humanity found them, we studied them until we gained the tools necessary to build our own. So we've got smaller portals around that we use as sort of trade items, trading. We move things between uh, the portals, but they're not, uh, they're not for humans to pass through. I'm trying to remember. I think that's right. Ruby Rose, the lesser portals. But those are still incapable of transporting people. They go see, I remember. Until the major ones become activated. Speaking of which, two of the five are in complete disrepair. Yang nods over to them as we wait. Yang, what's up with those? Glinda, broken portals to planes we no longer have access to. Yang, how come? I look to Ozpin, who merely smiles at me. Ozpin, why don't you tell Yang what you remember and I'll fill in any gaps? Ruby, well, I know one was intentionally sealed off. According to the legend, everything started there. The conflict that shattered our planes. Sounds like a good reason to shut it off, doesn't it? We don't know for sure who or what is on the other side. Really? But since it has such an ugly history, we call it the Scar. I like the Scar. It looks good. It looks like it's got like crab legs coming out of it or something. It had another name, uh, a more formal one. I racked my brain, wishing Ospin would step in. He seems far too amused at my attempt at a history lesson. Oh, let me entertain you, Ospin. Uh, Luna Fracta? Lord Ospin, very good, Ruby. Yang nods thoughtfully. Then she points to the other one, tilting her head in a silent question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one looks more uh, Teutonic, doesn't it? It looks like long boats, Viking boats. That one's the coolest. It does look pretty cool. As a girl, I read about it all the time. Nobody knows what it is. It's been broken for as long as anyone can remember. And now all we have are guesses and theories as to what happened. They call it Magnild. Magnild! The legends say... Sorry. Handlers come to take our mounts after a lengthy amount of instruction from Yang. They promise to ensure the dragons are kept in the driest environment possible. Environment possible. The threat of oncoming rain makes the air more humid than usual. I'm glad to see some of the younger wizards whispering fire into the air around our dragons to keep them warm and dry. Ruby Rose. Uh, and then there are the other three. This one's got more of a frosty look to it, hasn't it? 
Oh, God. Why have I got to say all these, pronounce all these again? I'm sure I got them wrong the first time. Mertenasta is the portal that goes to Mitchglass. They've got some of the greatest engineers in existence. Not to mention their major knights have remarkable precision. This is Glinda and control over dust in combat. Yang, who has enough dust to waste in a fight? Remember, dust is the magical stuff that does things. I think the description was. Ruby, they do, they do, they do. Oh God, and Lanzin Hua, is that one over there? It's like the jade portal with the jade dragons, I like it. I point to a bright green portal, the one made with jade, ebony, ancient teak, redwood and gold. It's pretty cool that one, pretty boss. Ruby Rose, it leads to Hep... Hep... Hepping? At a loss again, I beseech Ospin with my eyes. Hey Ping, I think it's pronounced Ruby, said Ospin. Happing. Hepping. Happing. That plane is a lot like ours, but the people are theocratic, kinda. So we probably need to get one of their dragon monks to join the Summer Rose Court if we're going to be friends. Glinda. We'll send them several of our mages in exchange. Yang, sounds like a piece of cake. If they have dragons, we've already got plenty in common. Ozpin, we'll need them if the grim threat gets any worse. Yang, the dragons? Lord Ozpin, the monks. Ruby, and lastly but not least... Oh, dang it, this looks sort of Greek, doesn't it? Hellenic of some sort. Ospin? Toakuain. Toakuain. Oh, that... Right, that... Toakuain is the portal that leads to Spiritus Bellatorum. They're sort of odd in that they have no magic at all. Like, none. They've <laughs> got no magic. <laughs> it just goes poof when you try to do it. Yang. Poof? Ruby. Poof. Yang. So then we need them because... Ruby, their fighters are really formidable. And on top of that, they're always being friendly. Getting their help should be the easiest, but... But almost all communication with them ended about two years ago. Oh, Yang, really? Lord Ospin, last we heard, they were in the depths of a civil war. Communication staggered and then slowly stopped altogether. Okay. Right. And as for the other two planes, well, Glinda, how did you put it? Glinda, they've grown bitter, like me, and cold to us after a near decade of no human contact. And they're isolated cultures in general, not very trusting. Ruby, yep, there you go. Hey, okay, Yang, and now we're going to open one of them. This is so cool. Look at Yang, she's so excited. There's already been some correspondence between us and the other planes. They should be aware that the major portals will be active again. Yang, what about their portals to each other? Lord Ospin, there are none. Oh, that's right, we're the sort of, we're the sort of centre point where all the portals come to us and they have to journey on. Sorry, Vale is a hub, that was the word I was looking for. Travel to the other planes is only possible from here. Glinda, once we make an attempt... Why do people keep saying attempt? I don't like that attempt word. The reverberation will travel across temporal space to... Yang, uh, look at Yang's face. She's like, say what? I step in to translate. The planes are our neighbours and they're expecting us. It's a sort of dumbed down version. There's a door on our end, then a hallway, and a door on their end. Now we're going to knock on the door and let them know we want to open the door. Their door. So we can go across the hallway that only appears when both doors are open. Okay. Yang. Nice. Glinda. Ugh. God. Glinda. Send Glinda across. Lord Ospin. So, which one shall we open first? Keep in mind that it will remain open until you decide to close it. The opening or sealing a portal will drain you mentally and physically. Ruby. I know. I'm still considering which choice is the best one to make. 
Glinda, then until you do, we'll begin preparations for the ceremony. Flanked by Glinda and Ozpin, I step closer to the area where the portals are kept. One of the wizards join us, a crystal blade clutched tightly in his hand. Easy, easy. Slowly more wizards approach, forming a semicircle around me, slightly ominous. Circle of old men. Humming words for entry, for distance, for doors. I realise at, realize at that moment that I haven't heard a single one of them make a sound that wasn't a spell. Their parties must be ace. The wizard who had greeted Glinda takes a spool of white yarn from within his sleeves, twining it three times around my left wrist. And then another one approaches with the knife. Come on, Yang, step in. I back away. Whoa, 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 says Ruby. Why does everything involve my blood? Good point. Glinda, your link to Crescent Rose is by virtue of your blood. It will only take a drop. That's what you always say. The mage nods, pricking the back of my hand with the point of the knife. Even if it's a small cut, it still makes me wince. Around us, the mages begin to sing sibilant noises, nonsense noises that I can't begin to translate. Glinda takes my elbow to steady me. Behind me, I hear Yang muttering something dark under her breath. She's, she's on her toes, Yang, isn't she? She didn't like this. Does she still like me, Yang? I think, didn't we have something going, me and Yang? I'm not sure now. The mage wipes the blade off on the thread and the length of it shivers with power. The small speck of red bleeds into the fibres, spreading out and out until the entire length of it burns scarlet. Glinda Goodwitch. Currently, Mertonasta is the only one we can open. Okay, well, why show me them all? Preparations aren't complete for the other two. Ruby, well, that makes the choice easier, doesn't it? Lord Ospin, Mertonasta would be the easiest to open regardless. The connection between our plane and theirs is strongest. Then that's the one I'm doing first. Good thinking. Okay, so it looks like we're choosing Mertonasta. Glinda, communication with that plane has been sparse as of last year. According to Torchwick, God damn Torchwick, the flow of dust from them to us has almost run dry. Yang, maybe they've been having trouble with the Grim too. Glinda, that doesn't matter. We need to re-establish trade with them and get them communicating with us again. Ruby, it might be hard. Didn't the last guy they sent through uh, die? Did, did, did that happen? Did that? Is that the case? On the same night as my parents. People die doing this? Yang, eesh, look at her face. It's like she's had a taste of lemon. Well, between our stellar good looks and your charming queenly nature, it should be easy, right? Glinda Goodwitch, keep in mind on the return trip, you will appear outside the Curia. You can control where a person winds up. Wait a minute. You can control where a person winds up? It's a question. Lord Ospin, our plane doesn't approve of non-royalty or those outside the Curia gazing upon the portals. He peers at Yang over his spectacles. She doesn't care, does she, Yang? She's, she's immune to all this. With a few exceptions, of course, for those closest to the Queen. Controlling where one exit also prevents potential enemies from coming through the portal directly into the heart of the Curia makes good sense. Ruby Rose, I see. We'll set up a greeting party for you outside, don't worry. You won't be zapped away to the furthest reaches of the plane. Glinda, well, probably ever, ever, ever spreading lightness and, and, and joy, Glinda. Whoa, okay. The mage nods and taking his spool of yarn begins to unravel it as he walks to the portal. Step by step he approaches and I see the flickering of magic begin. It buzzes, an ache between my ears. By the time he reaches the portal, it's awake and alive. Around us, the mages are singing louder than ever. I'm sweating now, feeling the pressure rise in my whole body like I am that string, slowly getting stretched out further and further. It tightens around my wrist harder than shackles. He walks through the portal, 
the trail of red yarn is stretched taut between us. Right, so he's off. He's off. Across the, the hallway to the other door. Everyone falls silent. After about 15 minutes, I feel a tug. Cool graphic. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow, look at Ruby. She's having a surge of power. Look at that sort of rose emblem on her chest. Power surges through the yarn into my body, lighting me up like a weather vane in a storm. I stand rigid, teeth grit and nostrils flaring, whole body shaking as I feel something move inside me. It must be like, a, like an alien movie. It travels out through the string into the glowing heart of the portal door. Next to me, I hear a whisper. Oh, you see that little beat of red then? Very good. Thinking it's Glinda, I lift up my bam wrist and make a questioning noise. But she doesn't respond. After a moment, I realise she's not even looking at me. Then whose voice was that? Whose voice indeed? Glinda. He's on his way back. One tug means all is fine. Two means he needs more time. Three is for an emergency. Just as she finishes, the mage returns in a jumble of limbs, falling to the ground and gasping. I do the same, falling back a few steps until Yang catches me, good old Yang. My chest rises and falls sharply with how hard I'm panting. Yet Yang, she's even shocked. Lord Ospin, it's done. The connection has been made. Now we can travel safely. It's all right for everyone else. Can I take this off? Linda nods and Yang helps me remove the yarn from around my wrist. A group of younger apprentices help the mage up, carting him away without another word. A bite of sympathy stings me. Ruby. I think he got the worst of it. Very regal of her, isn't it? Thinking about others. Thinking about her subjects. The throbbing in my skull finally lessens to a dull roar. Glinda. They usually do. That's just part of the sacrifice. Oh, so matter of fact. I do like Glinda. He's being well compensated for it, trust me. Are you ready to go through the portal, Rose? I nod. Glinda, good. I must stay on... Say what? I must stay on this side to watch over the gateway, at least for your first visit. Oh, like rats leaving a sinking ship, eh? You stay here, Glinda. Play some wizard scrabble. I'll go do the, the difficult stuff. How about you, Ospin? You coming? Ospin's coming, surely. And my connection, Lord Ospin, and my connection to Crescent Road still leaves me too vulnerable to travel through the portals at this time. Jeez. Wow. Yang, are you still coming? If anything were to go wrong with the portals, we'd, better, we'd, we'd be better suited here. Oh, what about me? Moss Chops, what about me? You'd be better suited here. I'd be stuck on the other side with the people. Yang, wait, what do you mean, go wrong? Glinda, well, let's just say I need to wait for the Rose Monarch to establish contact before further work can be done. Midge Class is a trusted ally. You'll be treated as an honoured guest and no danger will befall you. Well, why doesn't anyone else want to come then? Glinda, I trust you'll be able to cope without me? Ruby, I hope so. So I've got no choice. I mean, yes. Ospin, one more thing. The people of Mitch Glass are a little brusque. Is, is Glinda from there? Yang, meaning... Meaning subtlety and tact are lost on them. Put more kindly, they tend to be very straightforward. Be brutally honest, and you'll do fine. Mm. Ang and I step forward into the portal. We are off on our holidays. We're here. <clears throat> Yang. Yeah, so here we are. Looks like a sort of snowy place. There's people fighting in the background. Sort of an armed combat going on. Looks like a training facility. Who the hell designed that thing? Ruby, come on. It wasn't that bad. A little weird, maybe. Yang, a, a little? I'm going to be sick. Ruby, at least we made it through in one piece. Yang, thanks Ruby. I needed the reminder that many pieces was an option. <laughs> the first thing I notice when we come out of the portal is the cold. 
Icicles hang from the walls nearby and the ground is completely covered in snow. Ruby, this is awful. Yang. Yeah, Beacon's a little chilly compared to the desert, but this place is butt-bustingly cold. The portal is located on a training ground. A large wooden area is off to the side. It's a pretty impressive sight. Soldiers run drills under the watchful eye of a quartermaster, while knights in a full plate in full plate clash. Oh, dear, clash? While knights in a full plate clash in full contact duels. Most of the knights are fighting one on one. Polished weapons glint and glimmer, and not just from the sunlight. Glinda said they were good at using dust. Maybe as part of the negotiations, I can get them to teach us some new tricks. The sound of ringing steel hits my ears and I turn to look. Most of the duelists have stopped to watch a group of three knights take on a single challenger. The lone fighter is a woman with long white hair streaming behind her. Her armour is bare steel, plainer than most of the other knights I can see, though there's a shimmer to it that indicates some sort of magic. All of that pales next to the fact that she's taken on all three opponents alone. And winning. Ruby Rose, wow. Yang, hmm? Ruby, Yang, look over there. I nod over to the jewel. One of the knights thrust at the white-haired woman's head, only to get parried aside as she dances around her opponents. The three keep trying to flank her, but every time they move, she darts aside. She's making them attack on her terms, not theirs. Her offhand twists and draws a sigil in the air. At a word, ice fires from her fingertips, trapping the feet of one opponent while she deals with the other two. She's using magic. Yang. She's jealous. Jealous. That's her jealous face. Not bad. It's not really the same as fighting a grim, but she's definitely better than the drunk's torchwicks got. That is her jealous face. Ruby. Yeah, but that's a pretty low bar. Admit it, you're impressed. A soldier notices us and approaches. Soldier. Your Majesty, I understand you are here to see the Duke. Ruby. Y y yes, the Duke. I keep blushing. Yep, exactly where we need to go. Did we know anything about a Duke? We just came through. Uh, uh, we had no real plan. Soldier, if you and your companion will wait here a moment longer, I'll take you to him. Ruby, of course. He bows and leaves. Yang, so who is this Duke anyway? Ruby, Duke Guntram. He's the ruler of Mitchglass. He's been since my mother was the queen. Yang, you ever meet him? Ruby, I don't think so. There were a few knights who came through the portal, but none stayed very long. They always looked uncomfortable in Vale, like the city put them on edge. Just then the soldier returns. Your Majesty, if I may. Ruby, right. Okay, wow. Wow, okay, we are in the Duke's throne room. Well, look at that, like that sort of scorpion creature in the background. What we got? These are the Grim in the background. They look pretty cool. It's emptier than I thought it would be. Not that that's a bad thing, so that's the Duke. He looks badass. It's probably better than we do, we do this with fewer people around. And if he were planning an ambush, he'd probably have more guards. Soldier. Announcing Her Majesty Rubil... <laughs> Alarmed, I shuffle closer to the soldier, getting up on the tips of my toes to whisper into his ear. What is her name? <clears throat> her Majesty Ruby II of the Rose Dynasty, Queen of the Kingdom of Vital and surrounding territories, Inheritor of the Rose Throne, Defender of Vow. It's quite... It's quite a title. Taking inspiration from me, Yang grins hugely and grabs the soldier by the shirt, pulling him over to whisper her own instructions. Yang. Soldier. And Her Royal Highness Yang, the 23rd of the Zhao Long Confederacy, most revered Archduchess of the Western Expanse, Queen's Champion and all-round badass. I like it. Ruby Rose, seriously? <laughs> Yang, I knew he had to say it. Duke Guntram, it's not every day that I invite foreign royalty into my hall. It's even less common since the portal's closed. Okay, what did they say? These people are very direct. Be direct. To what do I owe the pleasure? A 
Oh shoot, what's the address for a duke again? Um, duke, your, your lordship. Your lordship. Long has it been since our court. That will do, Miss Rose. You are not here to mince words. You are here for soldiers. Whoa, 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 okay. You are here to ask me to send my people to die, so the chores may live. Let's not pretend that this is anything else. Hey, hey, can't we have a cup of tea and some biscuits first before we get a bit, we get on a little bit? The Rose is a bit taken aback by that, remember. Okay, I want to save our people. I'll do what I have to do. So, what did they, so be direct. I'll do what I have to do. Well, Ospin did say to be frank, brutally, brutal honesty it is. I want you to honour the treaty of our ancestors signed. I want you to send your knights to fight next to mine. Right now my people are the only thing standing between the rest of the plains and a horde of Grimm who'd be all too happy to explore new land. If we fall, the Grimm won't stop with Vital. Vital, Vital, your plane is basically right next door. How long do you think before they come here? A month? A year? I want you to help so both our nations can survive this. Alright, now shush now, shush now Ruby. We're going, to, we're going to lose people, but if Mitch Glass warriors and engineers are as good as I've heard, having you on our side will mean that we lose a lot less. Duke Guntram. Silence. Worrying. Oh, okay, okay, I think that was good. I think we did well. I'll admit, I did not expect some, such fire or pragmatism from a child queen. Ruby, I'm more than old enough to sit on the throne, your grace. That's it, Ruby, that's it. And if I weren't, the burden of the crown would have crushed me before I had the chance to reopen the portals. Duke Guntram, indeed it would have. I think we've got his respect with that little speech. I am not the kind of man to break my word, Ruby Rose. You will have your reinforcements. And a representative on your court as well. Unfortunately, the exact terms of our alliance may have to wait. There is a judicial matter that demands my attention. Okay. Ruby, can I ask what crime is more important than a visiting monarch? Duke. High treason, actually. Oh, look at his angry face, Ruby. Angry face, Ruby. Back off. One of my knights betrayed their sacred oath and is about to be punished accordingly. Ruby, I, I see. Would it be all right if we watched? I'm sure our histories are a bit dated regarding Mitch Glass legal rights. Okay, she's a watcher. I doubt it. Little changes in Mitch Glass. Duke Guntram. Come, we'll have two monarchs deliver judgment against this traitor. Okay, Ruby, don't mess this up. Don't mess this up, Ruby. If we're lucky, maybe we'll get some entertainment out of the ordeal. Oh, this, uh, this isn't going to be good, is it? Ruby's not going to like this. Concerned, I whisper to Yang. What do you think he means by entertainment? Shush, dog. Sorry. Dog stretching. Uh, Yang. Nothing good. Come on, we're not going to find anything out just waiting around here. I'll be right beside you. That's what worries me, Yang. The Duke nods to one of his attendants and the servant throws the doors to the hall open. Well-dressed nobles funnel in, taking their place around the hall. Like the military music. The faces I see range from sad to just plain furious. Okay. Whatever this knight did, they pissed a lot of people off. Last to arrive is a pair of guards dragging a slumped figure between them. A chain rattles every few steps, running from the manacles around the prisoner's wrists. The guards shove their captive to the middle of the hall, sending them sprawling. The prisoner lands on two knees with a thud, a curtain of dark hair swinging forward to block any recognisable features. All I can see is a strong jawline with the faint impression of an old, old bruised, old bruised beneath one eye. The prisoner's, the prisoner's gambeson is ripped, with broken straps dangling off the jacket. It looks like someone ripped the armour off and didn't bother to be careful. The prisoner straightens as far as the manacles will allow and stares calmly up at the throne, ignoring the hushed whispers of the crowd surrounding us. Looks less angry than I expect. Resigned is more like it. Okay, is that the prisoner? Noble, all rise for his High Grace Guntram of Feldberg and Her Majesty Ruby Rose of Vital. A 
the sea of courtiers stand to face me and the duke as we take our seats at the head of the hall. I will so never get used to that. Duke Guntram, proceed. Noble, with respect, your grace, Lancelin Schaefer has... Lancelin Schaefer has... Oh. Stranger, the correct address for a knight is Sir. It's that knight from the training ground. She looks freshly scrubbed after her bout on the field, her hair still damped from a, from a bath. Though surprised, the noble keeps collected in the face of the sudden interruption. Sir Schnee, this trial is based around the fact that this shepherd is no knight. Whoa, Ruby, shut up. Why is Ruby talking? Ruby, isn't it a bit early to call it a fact when your duke hasn't even passed judgement yet? The knight looks at me sharply. Sir Schnee. Exactly. And until Sir Lancelin is sentenced, you will address my knight by the proper title. Or shall I take it as an insult against my own honour? Wait, 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 wait a minute, who am I insulting? I also find it most interesting that you chose to expedite the trial without informing me. Do you look at that angry face? I believe the trial date was supposed to be next week, no? So Sir Schnee is protecting Sir Lancelin, is that right? The noble turns his nose up. Noble, Sir. He rolls his eyes and I can almost hear the quotation marks around the word. Sir Schnee bristles, her hand tightens on her hilt, but she keeps her silence. Lancelin stands accused of falsifying a noble lineage, that they, a commoner, had notions above their station and tried to falsify claim the honour of a true-born knight. This commoner de deceived the knight commander, their comrades and your grace. For that alone, any of our knights would be stripped of their title. As it is, Duke Guntram, you have made your point, Magistrate. Be seated. Duke Guntram, do you have anything to say in your defence, Lancelin? So that's Lancelin, okay. Lancelin. No, Your Grace, only that I did what I had to do so I could serve my plane. Duke Guntram, Sir Schnee. Sir Lancelin is as good as, I've tr as any I've trained, and loyal to a fault. They deserve a knighthood as much as the rest of my troops. Duke Guntram, if only that were true. Um... I really want to keep my mouth shut, but I'm going to ask for an explanation. Why does it matter that Lancelin, I mean Sir Lancelin, I mean, why does the title matter? Duke Guntram, only nobility are allowed to earn knighthood. Ruby, why? If someone's a good fighter, wouldn't it be better to have them protecting you? Duke Guntram, be very, very, very careful, Ruby. The noble families are sworn to me for a reason. They've proven their worth time and time again. More importantly, they know that if any member of their house betrays the crown, the entire family will be exiled and their rank given to someone more worthy. It tends to keep them in line. Okay, it's a good policy. Yeah, Yang, that does sound effective. As a commoner, this person has no reason to be trusted, especially after what they've done. Duke Guntram, Lancelin Schaefer. You deceived your fellow knights in this court to achieve your own desires. Your actions broke the trust placed in you, your peers and your commanding officer. That alone makes you a disgrace to the knights who have gone before you. Yours is an honourable ambition, I'd even call it a valorous one, but it is not your place to wish for such an honour. Therefore I banish you, hereby banish you, from this court, to die in the frozen waste beyond our borders? Wow. Wow. Even Lancelin's taken aback by that. So Schnee. Your Grace! Duke Guntram, silence! Duke Guntram, I am not without reason. Lancelin, you will be taken to the Hall of Judgment. There you will face one of our guardians of old in trial by combat. What? He's going to have a fight, then be sent out to freeze to death? In the unlikely event that you win, I will give you your shield. Lose, and whatever it is left of your mangled body will be exiled. Okay. So the lose, win, lose, lose, lose. You wanted to be a knight. This is your one chance. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Suddenly, Sir Snee stands up. 
bear, bristling with barely restrained fury, I think that said. Sir Shani, I invoke my right as Lancelin's commander. Lancelin Schaefer, no commander. Sir Shani, hold your tongue. Your grace, Sir Lancelin's crime happened under my command. I am responsible for my knights and I will fight in their stead. Duke Guntram, Sir Shani, I hope you know that if you lose, you will both share the same fate. Sir Shani, I do. Okay, I suppose it is your choice to make. Take them. A cadre of guards escort Lancelin away. I can see them try to reach out to Sir Shani one last time, a look of beseechment shining bright in their eyes. Turning her head aside, the knight commander pays them no mind. She marches out of the hall, several of her knights rising to follow her. We move into the corridor, leading to the Hall of Judgment. Two huge and armoured knights escort Sir Shani at the front of the crowd, one on each side. The Duke and his entourage of old nobles follow them after them, silent as the grave. Sir Lancelin trudges along behind, the rattling shackles at their wrists, a grum, grum, a grum <laughs> punctuation, a grim punctuation to every step. Do they all have to be so quiet? Yang, let's have a little sing-along. Yang and I bring up the rear, followed by the knights supposedly under the Duke's command. I think they want to support Sir Lancelin and Sir Shani more, though. Ruby Rose, Sir Shani doesn't look afraid at all. Yang, right, look, Sir Lancelin's over there's more scared than Sir Sneezes. <laughs> I hide a wince and jab Yang with an elbow. It's Shani, Yang. Oh geez, sorry about that. These names are a little hard to say. A tense silence settles again as we lead further down. As we are led further down, God. The hallway splits and Sir Shani is immediately shuffled to the right, while the rest of us are herded to the left. This all seems too sudden. My mouth opens as I turn my head to follow Sir Shani's path. Ruby Rose, wait, Sir Shani! What, what are you going to do, Ruby? What you doing, Ruby? The three knights stop and turn to look at me over their shoulders. Sir Shani's expression is one of expectation, maybe a little impatience too, or annoyance at being stopped. What are you doing? I swallow my words at first. After I take a deep breath to steady myself, I manage to continue. Um, don't die. Good luck out there, or remain silent. Well, good luck out there. I don't think you should say that. Don't die. Don't die. I wanted to remain silent, but it seems like I've started. I'm going to say don't die then. Okay, Ruby. Don't die. So Shani stares at me for a few seconds, processing my command. That's okay, but I think we've done all right. Before I can start beating myself up over my blunt words, the corner of her lips quirk in what might be a smile. She dips her head in a slight nod, the most acknowledgement I've seen from her, and then her escorting knights start bullying her back down the hall. Okay. She's not going to die. She was taken on three knights when we arrived. Despite the silence, my chest somehow feels a little lighter. We don't usually wish criminals luck here in Mitch Glass, Your Majesty. I, I, uh, I didn't. I said, don't die. Mitch Glass is so weird. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. And I think we've reached a very good point, a cliffhanger to stop at. I think we've probably gone long enough. Uh, so um, that brings us neatly to the end of this episode. I'm going to hit the old saberoo. Oh, oh. Oh, oh no, not yet. And uh, we'll return to see what this trial by combat uh, results in and whether we've got any new characters that are brought into the fray. But things are going well in Mitch Glass, I feel. We've done all right. We're out there. We haven't insulted anyone. We haven't put our foot in it. And uh, we're about to watch some, some top class entertainment. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. That is Summer Rose Court. It is available for free on Itch. Uh, there will be a link in the description below. Go and get it. Go and download it. Go and play it, you fools, while you're listening to me, while you're watching and playing it yourself. 
and I'll see you soon. Thanks for joining me. All right, take care. Bye-bye.